So, uh, you got it? All right. Looks like we're online then. Wonderful. Yay, that's right. In that case, welcome to you all, and welcome to you all who are streaming from home. <clears throat> I, I just, I continue to remind everyone, I will keep saying this either till I'm blue in the face or till you just can't stand it anymore, but if you're streaming, you're not watching worship happen, you're worshiping from home, and you're a part of this community as well, and we're grateful the Lord has provided this technology and medium uh, as we work through these strange times in which we live. So welcome to everyone. And as we gather in the presence of the Lord, I pray that he blesses and keeps us, that our eyes are open to his glory and to his grace, and that we're shaped by his word and moved by his love. God bless you this morning. This seems bizarre, but I don't have any uh, particular announcements to make yet. Uh, are there, do you all have any announcements that should be made? We're all quiet. Yeah. We're all getting tired of wearing masks. <laughs> I tell you, now, this is not a medical excuse, folks, but when I wear my mask, I tend to get drowsy. I, I swear I think it's all the CO2. Uh, and so if you're nodding off during uh, my sermon today, I'll assume that it's the mask and not because the sermon's so lousy. <laughs> You couldn't, you couldn't keep your eyes open. <laughs> oh, God bless you. Friends, let's begin our worship. And I'd like to open this morning with our call to worship from Psalm 139. I love this entire psalm, uh, but I'll only read the first three verses. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let's worship. Please join me in the prayer of praise and adoration. Gracious God. You have, you have searched, searched us and known us. us. You, you indeed discern our thoughts from afar. You lead us in the way everlasting. As we gather to bless you for your bountiful mercy, for the compassion and care you extend to us. You surround us with a mantle that protects us from danger. Our breastplate is your righteousness. Fulfilled in Christ Jesus. You are our shield and defender, our hope and our comfort. We give you all praise as we gather in Christ's name.
are commanded to love the God, the Lord our God, walk in his ways and observe his commands, decrees and laws. Although we continually fail, God never ceases to long for us to turn away from our sin and toward him. Knowing the richness of God's mercy, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Gracious God, God have, have mercy, mercy upon us as, as we make our confession. We, we question your judgment when, when your will conflicts with our own. We are reluctant to follow the course you prescribe. Our patience grows thin when you intrude in life's journey, causing us to veer from the path we pursue. We are quick to receive your grace and forgiveness, but are slow to extend it to those who have wronged us. Have mercy on us, O God, and let your grace abound. God's mercy is sure and everlasting. Receive the God, Lord's grace. Let your heart be cleansed and restored, and have been made by whole grace. Leave this place with the willingness to forgive others. Amen. <laughs> Any other young disciples? All right, stay there if you want to. I have the basket. I know you three guys. I brought a camping pillow. Ah, it's nice, isn't it? And speaking of getting drowsy in those masks, you might feel like you need one of these right now. Feels good to lay your head on a pillow. Jacob didn't have one of these. He was running from his brother Esau. He'd done some pretty lousy things to his brother. And Jacob was on the run. And one night he stopped outside to lay down because he needed to stop for the night. There was no local hotel to check into. So he camped outside right under the stars. And he didn't have a pillow with him. But there was a stone there. God, 
who's perfect in every way and completely holy, totally righteous. In fact, the New Testament says God dwells in unapproachable light. You can't even get close to God. And especially we can't get close to God because we're so imperfect. We, we're, you know, we commit sins and things. So, I think that Jesus is the ladder. And what Jesus did was, Jesus became the ladder that made the people from earth able to connect with God. And Jesus is the grace. And he is the ladder. And he is the way that we get to God. So, we couldn't get there on our own. So, God sent down a ladder so that we could What a strange dream. Maybe you guys had some strange dreams. We were talking about some weird dreams we all had last night. But Jacob's was pretty weird. And he dreamt about, you know, seeing this ladder and blessings or angels going up and coming down. Uh, that's Jesus. That's what Jesus did. He bridged the gap between heaven and earth. We couldn't get there on our own. So God dropped down the ladder for us. And praise be to God for that. So maybe, maybe think about that as we lay our heads out on it. Hard old rock with all nice comfy lumpy pillows. But we can think about the grace of God as we drift off into his arms. Let's pray. God, we thank you. Thank you for sending the ladder down for us. Because we couldn't reach you on our own. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We just ask that uh, as we begin this new day together, that uh, you help us to just perceive you more and more. That you open our eyes to your love and your grace, that you help us to follow you in a way that touches other people as well. Help us pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. just in training this morning. There you go. First reading is Genesis 28, 10 through 19. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he had saw a stairway resting on the earth, with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called it is. Good job, Sarah. Our second reading is from the Gospel of John. I'd like to read to you chap from chapter 1, <laughs> verses 43 through 51. The next day, 
Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Let's pray. Gracious and eternal God, we give you thanks, for we know that your presence is here. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of grace and for the gift of your word, which shapes us as your people. We pray simply that you allow our hearts to be fertile soil this morning for the planting of your seed, and that in Christ, together, we may be built up as disciples. Through Christ we pray. Amen. In her book, uh, Amazing Grace, Kathleen Norris tells a marvelous story that reminded me of Jacob's experience with God. She wrote about a time that she was waiting at an airport when her attention was captured by a young couple with a little baby. The baby was staring very intently at people as they passed by. And as soon as this young child recognized a human face, and it didn't matter if the face was young or old. She writes, pretty or ugly, bored or happy, or worried looking. He would respond with absolute delight. The kind of whole body smile that only babies can give. Norris writes, it was beautiful to see. Our drab departure gate had become a gate of heaven. As I watched that baby play with any adult who would allow it, I felt awestruck at Jacob because I realized that this is how God looks at us, staring into our faces in order to be delighted. As Psalm 139 puts it, darkness is as nothing to God who can look right through whatever evil we've done and see our face. A face he loves, even the two-faced Jacob. You don't have to feel close to God for God to be near to you. And you don't have to reach out for God for God to come to you. And you don't have to be a perfect person for God to bless you. And Jacob is the case in point. Jacob is among the great Old Testament patriarchs, but he was no saint. After cheating his brother out of uh, his birthright and his blessing, Jacob is on the run from his brother Esau's murderous rage. Jacob's name is a Hebrew word, which means he grasps the heel. That's a Hebrew idiom for deceptive behavior. And so as his name indicated, Jacob was a born deceiver. He was a habitual schemer, a smooth little weasel, and a half-hearted believer if he was one at all. Most of us church folk would have a hard time even talking to such a scoundrel. So the thought that Jacob would be given this splendid vision of God may strike us as being unfair. And now in our reading, Jacob is on the run. And while he's on the way to Haran, he sleeps out in the wilderness with a stone for a pillow. He was a man in isolation, 
alone with himself, far from home, far from other humans, and most of all, far from God, or so we thought. Because as he fled his brother Esau, God followed him. There's only one explanation for what happened that night in that dark place. And that explanation can only be, as I see it, God's amazing grace. His sheer, unmerited grace. As Jacob dreamed that night, he saw a ladder stretched from heaven to earth. And contrary to the popular spiritual, the ladder Jacob saw in his dream wasn't Jacob's ladder. Jacob did not build a ladder to God and climb the stairway to heaven by a succession of good deeds and proper prayer life. No, it was God who built this stairway. He built it down from heaven to earth. God is standing atop of this stairway, rolling down these incredible blessings that shape the rest of Jacob's life. Who could be any more undeserving than Jacob? And yet God has chosen him to bless him. I love the way Kathleen Norris puts it in her book. She goes on to write that God's response to finding Jacob vulnerable, sleeping all alone in open country, is not to strike him down for his sins, but to give him a blessing. The real miracle here isn't the ladder with God at the top and angels going down and going up. The miracle here is that Jacob receives God's blessings. Jacob, an unbelieving sinner. Not only has Jacob shown a complete lack of moral integrity, but also there's a lack of any real trust in God. But God makes his promise anyway. Again, God had already spoken part of that promise to Abraham and to Isaac, and now God lets it be known that he will keep his promise to and through a wretch like Jacob. And God makes it even more personal than ever. Not only will Jacob's descendants inherit the ground on which he slept, but God will also be with Jacob in whatever happens, and he will never forsake him. This story shows us that God will speak and keep his promise to us, not because we deserve it, but because God's way is a way of forgiveness and restoration. We may be undeserving and unlovable, but we are so important to God that he lets down the ladder and comes to rescue us. This is a foundational point of the Christian faith. If we don't understand this, then we understand nothing. God invades the very center of our existence because he wants to find us, to speak to us, and then to bring him back to, our, to himself. Jacob responds to this vision of God's amazing grace with an honest confession of faith. He declares, surely the Lord is in this place and I wasn't aware of it. Words that any of us might speak. God is with us even when we don't know it. As I said in the beginning of the sermon, you don't have to feel close to God in order for God to be near to you. You don't have to reach out to God for God to come to you. And you don't have to be a perfect person for God to bless you. As you continue reading this story, you'll see that Jacob has a lot to learn. But don't we all? I would like to submit to you as we consider the story of Jacob and the ladder. That even though it is firmly fixed in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ is there. I love that reading from John 1, and I find it fascinating that Jesus uh, sees Nathanael coming, and Jesus' response when he sees Nathanael is, ah, in this Israelite there is no deceit. How fascinating, isn't it, when Jesus is about to reference a story from the Old Testament, speaking about Jacob, whose name Indicates that Jacob was a deceiver of his day. Little hint, perhaps, at what is about to transpire. 
In that reading, Jesus was re is recruiting Nathaniel to be one of his 12 apostles. And Jesus alluded to this story from Genesis when he says to Nathaniel, you'll see heaven opened up and you'll see angels of God ascending and descending. Only Jesus doesn't say you'll see them ascending and descending on a ladder. He says you will see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man, upon Christ himself. Jesus is quoting this central passage from the Old Testament, but there's something different about it. There's a very subtle change when Jesus gives his version of Jacob's ladder. The important thing to catch when Jesus is speaking to Nathaniel is there's a change of position that has taken place. When Jesus recites this story, God is no longer at the top of the ladder. He's at the bottom of the ladder. And he is the ladder. You see, God is here with us. In Jesus Christ, he is clothed in the rough clothes of our humanity. He's one of us. Right here at the bottom, Jesus is the very gate of heaven. Friends, we face uncertain times. And there's so much talk of normal today. Don't we ask this? I'm looking at you all. You've got masks on. You know, there's a mask under the pulpit. I have five in my truck. There's two or three on my desk. There's one here in my pocket. And we ask ourselves all the time, when are things going to get back to normal? Or those other more ominous words I hear all the time. This is the new normal. You know what someone told me normal is? I learned what normal is. Someone said, Randall, normal? That's the setting on your washing machine. That's the only thing that's normal. There is no normal. These are uncertain times. But let me reassure you of some things that I know beyond the shadow of a doubt. God is here. We are not alone. And God wants to bless us. His grace and mercy are available and are sufficient to meet all of our needs. Regardless of whatever struggles we have in this life, the important things are taken care of. And regardless of whatever struggles we have, God is with us. We just need to lie down sometimes at the foot of the cross, resting our weary heads on the rock of ages. When we do so, we discover that this is the house of God, not this church. But this creation, the places where we are, because that's where God is. This is the very gate of heaven. Not because we're holy people, but because Jesus is here. That's true wherever we go. However far we may feel from God, however afraid and lonely and guilty we may feel, even if we have wrestled with God and lost, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place, even when we don't know it. May God open our eyes to his presence in our lives each and every day. God bless you, and amen. Thank you. Our hymn, most appropriately, is surely the presence of the Lord is in his place. in this place. Friends, let us join our voices now as we confess our faith in response to God's grace. Let us say in unison the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, let's pray for each other. We need to pray for each other. Prayer is a gift. It is a responsibility. It's a joy to connect with our Father in Heaven, who is right here among us. So I invite you to share with any joys or concerns that you have. Uh, speak them out loud and proud, and then I'll repeat them so that the folks that are at home uh, streaming the worship service this morning are able to hear. Uh, are there any joys or concerns? Concerns to share. Bill? Just a concern. Years ago, there was a family here, uh, Rich and Darlene Shields. They had four boys. Uh, Rich is on his last fight with cancer. And uh, they're having a little hard time accepting it. But, so if we could have them in their prayers, we have them in mind. It's just, it, it, it's just a shame. They hit them so hard, so quick. It just moved clear down to his stomach, from his chest. He's, he's just bad. And the doctor said it was just a matter of time. Yes. There's nothing else they can do. Thank you, Bill. We'll be praying for the Shield family as Richard is suffering from cancer, uh, terminal cancer. Yes. Be lifting them up to the Lord. Uh, Ruth? Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. Ruth, we praying for your niece who has lung cancer. Absolutely. Janine? We'll be praying for Shane, and we rejoice. I especially rejoice that he's working up at camp. I know he's doing a great job. We have been blessed to have staff members from this church continue the work of Lambeck. Yes, Pat. Keep, yes, we'll, we'll keep praying and we're praising too. Uh, Pat, thank you for uh, rejoicing over the fellowship of God with help as you all moved and that Jim's hands are, are healing. Are there others? Yes, Peter. I feel so joyful for the opportunity to worship together. Great music, great preaching, sharing joys and concerns. It's just so good to be here. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. What a joy it is to gather together as the people of God. It's so important. I don't know how folks do it without a community of faith. Are there others? Faith? Maybe just share and share. There's all kinds of people uh, who are having trouble paying their rents and paying mortgages and landlords getting rents. So there's so much of a delay, especially in Pennsylvania. Oh my goodness. Uh, and uh, and just prayers that some of that 
Yes, absolutely. The financial repercussions of this pandemic are, are long, long reaching uh, and will take, uh, will take quite some time to recover from. Yes, praise, uh, prayers for those that are especially affected. Anyone else? Eileen? Yes, indeed. And I understand that they are working on their, they're going to have a memorial service sometime in the future, uh, but we don't know when yet. So those, those plans are in the works. Anyone else? Then friends, let's pray together. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your unmerited grace. Lord, we know that uh, we do not deserve it or control it. And yet your love for your people has moved you to extend grace and forgiveness and mercy through faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you, O oh God, for lowering a ladder who is Christ himself, who has saved us from our own shortcomings. O oh God, help us to reflect each day on what it means to be saved by grace. That as our eyes become more and more open to uh, your forgiveness and mercy, that our hearts may respond with gratitude. Strengthen us that we may share this grace with one another, with those who have wronged us. Help us, O oh God, to receive this grace for ourselves and to forgive ourselves for sin long past. Help us to live as your grateful people, so inspired and moved by your salvation that we share the good news of Jesus Christ, not only with our words, but also with the ways in which we live our daily lives. God, we rejoice as Jacob discovered that your presence was right there where he was. We rejoice that you were here where we are today and you have heard these prayer requests. We lift them before you as we pray especially for those who, whose names have been mentioned this morning, for those that are in need of your healing touch, for those who grieve and mourn, for those whose lives are filled with anxiety and stress, for those who may be losing their homes or their health or their families or their well-being. God, we lift them to you along with those names and needs which have not been mentioned out loud but have only been spoken within the silence of our own hearts. And we pray for the needs of our communities. We pray for the needs of this church and her members. God, we pray for the needs of our great nation. We lift to you those who lead and who serve the American people. And we pray for your children around the world. Receive also, O oh God, our deepest joys and our highest praises. For you are our God and we are your people. And we glorify and magnify your holy and precious name, even as we rejoice in the many ways that you are working in and through our lives. <laughs> Bind us together as one people and move us together that we may work among your fields. Lord, we lift these prayers to you in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, let's continue our joyful worship as we bring to God his tithe and our offering. Friends, our closing hymn is uh, the first verse of Fairest Lord Jesus.
What a great way to conclude our worship together this morning. Friends, as we return back out into the world, go rejoicing in the grace of God. For God has lowered to us his ladder. That ladder is Jesus Christ. It's our joy to know God and to reach him through his grace, his amazing grace. And so let us go not only rejoicing in that, but also sharing that good news with others. And friends, go knowing that you are loved. And now, may the roads rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold each of you in the palm of his hand. Amen and amen.